I'm going to show you absolutely everything you need to know to succeed as an arcane mage in Cataclysm Classic, including talents, glyphs, rotation, consumables, professions, and everything else. Let's start off looking at what race we're going to choose. If you are a fellow Alliance player, the new sexy Worgen spec is going to be the one for you. We actually get the Dark Flight Racial on a two-minute cooldown, giving us a 40% movement speed increase for 10 seconds. This is, needless to say, an amazing get-out-of-jail-free card if you're standing in the fire or need to get from A to B, etc. Another racial we have as Worgen is Viciousness, increasing our critical strike chance by 1%. Whereas if you are Horde, I would say to go with Troll for two reasons. One is Berserking, increasing your attack speed and casting speed for 20% for 10 seconds. That's on a three minute cooldown. And we should use this in our burn phase. Arcane Mage does have a burn and conserve phase of their rotation, which I'm going to be talking you through later. And again, Berserking can actually really increase the potency of this. Another thing that is less useful, but nuanced, I must say, is Beast Slaying. Damage dealt versus beasts is increased by 5%. Not very useful at the start of Cataclysm. When we go into Firelands, there are actually a few bosses that we will benefit from from this racial, however. It was probably going to be no shock to you that we're going into the Arcane Tree as a Arcane Mage. And the way that Arcane works is, the more mana we have, the more damage we are going to do. And like I said, we go for a burn and conserve phase in our rotation. And our stats are actually going to play quite a large part in that as well. Number one is, of course, going to be intellect, which we're going to be getting on all of our gear anyway. Second is going to be hitting our spell hit cap, which is going to be 17%. And then after that, we want to get as much haste as we can up to the uh, haste soft cap. Now, don't be overwhelmed by this. I love getting into the numbers. I'm actually a finance guy in my 9 to 5, so I love de delving deep into the numbers. This is the soft cap for haste. If you can't be bothered of all this, then don't worry. I'm just putting this bit in here for the people that do care. The numbers on the right-hand side are the haste caps that you're going to need to get to at the point in the priority of stats to get to the soft cap. The tier 11 four-piece, do we have it? No. Go to the next one. 5% spell haste, do we have it? Yes, go to the next one. No, go to the next one. Basically, keep going over until you, you know, like a flow chart, until you get to the haste rating you need. If you really can't bother with all that, then don't worry too much. That is also absolutely fine. After that, we're going to want to get mastery. And then after that, we're going to be getting more haste. So after the soft cap and then critical strike. If you're wondering what our mastery does, well, this is what I was saying about mana. Increases all spell damage done by up to 24% based on the amount of mana the mage has unspent. Therefore, the more mana you have, the more damage we do. Each point of mastery increases damage done by up to an additional 1.5%. So looking at the talents, we're of course, like I said, putting them all into Arcane. First things first is Arcane Concentration, giving you a 10% chance of entering a clear casting state after any damage spell hits a target. This basically means that our next damaging spell will be completely free of any mana cost. Free out of free into Neverwind Presence, increasing our spell haste by 3%, helping us get to that soft cap. On the next row, I've put free out of free into Torment of the Week. Your arcane damage spells deal 6% more damage to snared or slowed targets. Two out of two into Invocation. If we interrupt a spell cast on our enemy, we will gain 10% damage bonus for 8 seconds. Our main interrupt is this spell down here on a 24 second cooldown, Counter Spell. Counters the enemy spell cast, preventing any spell from that magic being cast for 7 seconds. You could take these points out of Invocation and put them into Improved Blink um, or Burning Soul. Burning Soul reducing the casting time lost from damaging attacks. It really depends if you are going to be interrupting much in the fight, if there's any chance of you getting um, pushback on your spells by damage or not, um, or how much mobility you need from Blink. You could even put Improved Counter Spell, increasing um, the silence on there for two seconds. Those are really quite up to you, depending on your fight. If you can't be bothered of all that, just go with the build I'm showing here. Two out of two into improved arcane missiles, increasing the number of missiles fired by two. Basically, that's a spell where we fire arcane missiles. And improved blink, increasing the speed by increasing your speed by 30% for three seconds after using blink. We can use blink, as you can see down here, teleporting the caster forward unless something is in the way. And then for a few seconds after, we have improved movement speed. And that is going to really help with mobility in some fights. 
On the next row, we have Presence of Mind. This is a cooldown on 1.5 minutes. When activated, your next mage spell with a casting time less than 10 seconds will be instant cast. And also Arcane Flows. Reduces the cooldown and Presence of Mind, Arcane Power, and Invisibility spells by 25%, and the cooldown of your evocation by 2 minutes. This is basically reducing the cooldown on a lot of our cooldown spells. To add to into Missile Barrage, your Arcane Missile spell will fire its missiles every 0.5 seconds, making it quicker. And Prismatic Cloak, reducing damage taken by 6% and reducing the fade time of your invisibility spell by 3 seconds. Some survivability added on that talent. Improved Arcane Explosion here, reducing the global cooldown of Arcane Explosion, reducing the threat generated and reducing the mana cost. This is really interesting. If we look at our Arcane Explosion, you can see it costs 1300 mana and we're going to be using this in AoE quite rapidly, as you can see here. And that really helps with reducing that mana cost and also the global cooldown. If you don't know what a global cooldown is, see how it goes around in like a clock face when we use it. And that is obviously the time spent between being able to use it again or any other spell. That is reducing that clock or that cooldown called the global cooldown between our spells on that spell. We then have Encanters, or Encanters even, Absorption. When your mana shield or mage ward absorbs damage, your spell damage is increased by amount of the amount absorbed. In addition, when your mana shield is destroyed, enemies are knocked back. Arcane Tactics, increasing the damage of all party and raid members by 3%. Woohoo for party and raid members! Slow, this is basically uh, a slow that we can use on one target at a time. Never Vortex, giving your Arcane Blast a 100% a chance to apply a slow to the target it damages if no target is currently affected by the slow. Then we've got Focus Magic, a really awesome ability, increasing the target's chance to critically hit with spells by 3% for 30 minutes. When the target critically hits, your chance to critically hit with spells is increased by 3% for 10 seconds. Cannot be cast on yourself. Basically, you want to put Focus Magic on a member of your party or raid. We then have Improved Mana Gem. Remember, we are actually wanting as much mana as we can get to do more damage from our mastery. Well, we can actually summon a Mana Gem here, conjuring a Mana Gem that can be used to instantly restore mana. The improved mana gem improves that mana gem. <laughs> Who would have thought? Mana gained from your mana gem also increases your spell power by 2% of your maximum mana for 15 seconds. And lastly, arcane power. Another cooldown we're going to be looking at shortly in the rotation. Master of the Elements, where your spell criticals will refund mana. Again, more mana, more damage. And Piercing Ice, increasing the critical strike chance of our spells by 3%. Now let's have a look at the glyphs we're going to be taking. So, arcane blast, increasing its damage. Glyph of Mage Armor, increasing your um, mana when you're using Mage Armor. Mage Armor is the armor I would recommend to use. Increasing your resistance to all magic and causing you to regenerate 3% of maximum mana every 5 seconds. Again, more mana equals more damage because of our mastery. In addition, the duration of all harmful magic effects used against you is reduced. And you can only have one Mage Armor on you at a time. Last one on the Prime Glyphs is going to be Arcane Missiles, increasing the critical strike chance of it. For Major, I would go with Blink, increasing the distance you travel with it. Arcane Power. When Arcane Power is active, the global cooldown of your Blink, Mana Shield and Mirror Image is reduced. And Glyph of Evocation. Your Evocation ability also causes you to regain 40% of your health. This is a spell cooldown we're going to be using to regenerate mana as well. For the Minor Glyphs, Glyph of Conjuring, reducing the cost of our Conjuring spells. Slow Fall, where we no longer need a reagent, making this just a quality of life improvement. And the Glyph of Arcane Brilliance. Now, while this may not seem relevant in reducing the mana cost of Arcane Brilliance, if somebody dies in the fight and they get resurrected and you want to re-put your Arcane Brilliance on them, this is going to help you conserve mana by doing that. But how is it all going to come together into the rotation? I may have said before that we have a Burn and Conserve phase. These spells here are our Burn phase, and this is our Conserve phase. This second row is our AoE rotation. Here's some cooldowns, here's some utilities. And that's how we're going to be going through them. So first off, we've conjured three mana gems, which is going to let us regenerate mana. Now, we don't need to use it if we're about to go into the fight, because obviously we've got max mana. But if we are going into a burn phase without maximum mana, we will want to start off by restoring our mana. We're then going to use Arcane Power cooldown. So this is the start of our burn phase. When activated, you deal 20% more damage. And damaging spells cost 10% more mana to cast. While the arcane power is active, the global cooldown on some of your spells is reduced. So basically, this is going to increase our mana cost of spells, but also increase our damage done by them. So we're going to use this along with any on-use trinkets and potions, etc., where we're increasing our damage as much as physically possible. We are then going to use our arcane blast until we have roughly 30% mana left. What this does is, we blast the target of energy, dealing arcane damage. Every time you use the spell, the explosion damage 
of Arcane Blast is increased by 13%. Arcane Blast casting time is reduced by 0.1 second, and Arcane Blast mana cost is going to go up by 150%. And that is every time you use it. The effect can stack up to four times, and it's going to last six seconds or until any Arcane Damage spell except Arcane Blast is cast. So you can see here, if I use Arcane Blast, and then I use it again, and then I use it again, we're getting um, debuff here. Arcane Blast and Arcane Explosion damage increased by 52%. The cast time reduced, but mana cost is going up substantially. Then, once we reach about 30% mana, we can use Invocation, gaining 15% of your mana and 10% of your health instantly, and another 45% of your total mana and 30% of your health over a few seconds. And that is then going to regain most of our mana. At that point, we're going to go into the Conserve phase. This is otherwise known as the Preservation phase, the Conserve phase, um, lots of Resting phase, there's a few phases names. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to try and stay as close to maximum mana as we can by using Arcane Blast, maybe two of them, maybe three or four of them, depending on how our mana permits. We don't want to lose much mana, so you can you know, use four stacks like I am here. And then we're going to use a non-arcane spell. Either arcane missiles, if it has procced, or arcane barrage, if our arcane missiles has not procced. We can also use our flame orb on cooldown in this phase. Launching a flame orb towards our target, dealing damage every second to the closest enemy for 15 seconds. So basically in the conserve phase, which is why you're waiting for evocation to come off cooldown, we're going to alternate a few uses between 2 to 4 of Arcane Blast, dependent on how much mana we have, keeping it as close to 100 as possible, and then using either Arcane Missiles or Arcane Barrage, depending on if we have a proc or not on Arcane Missile, as you can see here. So just to recap, for the burn phase, it's going to be when evocation is off cooldown. We're going to use our Arcane Power and basically any potions and things like that, Blasting our way down to 30% mana with our Arcane Blast. We can also use our Mana Gem at this point to help our mana stay up. Remember, the more mana we have, the more damage we are doing. Once you then get down to 30% uh, mana, we're then going to Evocate to get our mana and health back. Not that we really care. Well, we do care about health, but hopefully we should have health. You know what I mean? And then we're going to be going into the Conserve phase. Where we're going to alternate Arcane Blasts with arcane missiles if they proc and also arcane barrage and using our flame orb on cooldown and that is pretty much it for the main rotation on single target if we are looking at doing aoe damage to multiple enemies then what we're going to do is we're going to get like four arcane blasts out so basically get four stacks of that and then alternate it with an arcane explosions waiting for that debuff to fall off and then it's come off, and then we can use Arcane Blast. Basically, just do those two. If you can't get to your enemy, because obviously with these two blasts, you do need to be kind of at, at the enemy, then you can use your um, Blizzard, and you can use your Flame Strike. You can use both of these spells if you can't get to your enemy, um, because Arcane Explosion and Arcane Blast obviously need you to be right next to your enemy, as you can see. And that really is the only change we're doing for an AoE rotation. With Presence of Mind, you can't use it with Arcane Power. Just be aware of that, so use it outside of this part. Um, of course, we have our Time Warp, which is our Bloodlust for Heroism, increasing the casting speed of our allies and ourselves by 30% for 40 seconds. We then obviously can't use it again for 10 minutes. We've also got Mirror Image, creating free copies of the caster to attack our enemies. Some utilities we have is, of course, Arcane Brilliance, increasing intellect of us, our party, and raid members. Counterspell is our Interrupt. Conjuring those mana gems, keeping up our mage armor at all times, focus magic on an ally, and blink when we need to get out of the way or something, pretty much. And that is pretty much it for the main rotations. For the professions and gearing requirements, etc. First things first, you want to get your reputations with Hyjal and Ferrazane up as quickly as possible. You can do this while questing, by the way, which is a really good option. I have got a reputation guide. Check that out in my description. Arcanum of Hyjal is from the Guardians of Hyjal in Mount Hyjal, adding 60 intellect and 35 crit to a head slot item. That's an enchant. And on the shoulders, the Ferrazane one is 50 intellect and 25 haste. There is a revered version um, as well that you can get not needing um, ex exalted instead that's a little bit worse off. For the gems you're going to get, I would go with the Brilliant Inferno Ruby in red slots. For yellow, Reckless Ember Topaz, adding intellect and haste. Purified Demon's Eye on the um, blue slot, adding intellect and spirit. And then I would, for the uh, meta slot, use the Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond, increasing intellect and critical strike. 
regarding your weapon enchant, it's going to be Power Torrent, which has a chance for your spells to increase your intellect by 500 for 12 seconds. And then on the actual professions you should take, I like to go with tailoring because we're a cloth wearer and also because you can get a cloak enchant, as you can see here, light weave embroidery, giving your spells a chance to increase spell power for 295 for 15 seconds. On the rings, we can have enchanting, add greater spell power, and this is going to be a 46 spell power increase if you put this on both rings, which you can. The rest of the enchants are pretty standard, you know, mighty stats, intellect, etc, etc, that everyone's using. The consumables you want, Flask of the Draconic Mind, adding 300 intellect for an hour, and the Volcanic Potion, which is going to increase your intellect for 1200 for 25 seconds. Use this potion when you go into your burn phase. Of course, the flask will be on at all times. Severed Sagefish Head, if you're not using a feast, adding 90 intellect and stamina. And if you do need to have a healing potion, the Mythical Healing Potion is the way to go. And that is pretty much how you're going to play Arcane Mage in Cataclysm Classic. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I have done all specs and classes as a playlist, which you can check out here in a second, if you are interested in those. You can also join the Discord if you are needing of any more help, etc. I can answer questions for you there, as can our wonderful community, who will help beginners and veterans alike. If you'd like to support the channel, you may consider joining my Patreon, where I have Patreon-only guide videos, written guides that I've put together as well, and behind-the-scenes spreadsheets that may be useful for you in um, getting your keybinds together, etc., as well as some fantastic LVI UI profiles that I have available to you on my Patreon as well. A lot of people use ad blockers, etc., these days, and it is the, a really good way of supporting us creators um, because we don't really make much, especially in gaming, from YouTube ad revenue, and I only do this um, after my 9 to 5 in the evening. So I really, really appreciate it if you do consider um, subscribing. It is really, really appreciated, so thanks in advance if you are one of them. And again, if you are looking for any other specialization guide, I've spent the last few weeks um, theory crafting and putting these all together, so you can check them all out in this playlist here.